Cobas 8100. This is our input area, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna use drawers. Each drawer holds up, up to 100 samples. The only thing I'm doing here is loading as spun or unspun. That's the only sort I need to do. If I'm doing unspun, then I'm gonna bypass the centrifuge. Okay, spun, I come in, it's going to pick up the sample, it's going to take a picture, it's going to identify the cap color to match specimen type to the test order. Oh, okay. So if we have a mismatch, it immediately defaults it to the output buffer. There's the output buffer? It's right here. Okay. It'll be right here. So is there a dedicated oh, yeah, yeah, rack no, for the spun no, and unspun? or? Yes. So we're going to have this drawer, la um, a drawer labeled as pre-spun. So these, you don't go to the centrifuge. All the others go to the centrifuge. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be labeled here <clears throat> and here. And it'll say pre-spun. Okay. And you can, it can be any drawer. It doesn't have to be that drawer. You have to just label it. That just label it. Like that correct. And it's programmed that way. <clears throat> so we, again, weigh the tube so that when we self-balance, we load them into the boats. So it's a very fast load for balancing of the centrifuge and a very fast unload. Okay, we can do up to 300 tubes per hour with a 3,000 G spin. So a really good spin for five minutes. That gives us the 300 tubes per hour. Okay? Mm -hmm. So after centrifugation, <clears throat> we do the sample check module. Here, remember when I said we took a picture? Mm -hmm. Okay, we take a picture here, and we're looking at the serum or the plasma, and we're going to identify hemolysis, lipemia, and icterus. Okay? okay? But we got to have a window to see the serum and plasma. So it may require some education with the nurses if they're labeling tubes mm -hmm. that we have a window. Okay. We can't cover if the entire not, if tube. Covered, you can yes, because then we can identify here. I got a problem specimen. I default it immediately. Oh. Right? I don't have to send it and waste the time or the money that it goes down and runs test. I'm also using a laser to go through the sample and identify quantity not sufficient. Okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> so this sample check is done here so that I'm not sending tubes to the analyzers without uh, having that check done. So here is checking sample integrity. In That's the correct. Case. HIL, yep. sample volume. Yep. Because on your chemistry module, we do the serum indices, but this does it here instead of on the analyzers. Okay. Okay, here we're decapping. We can decap any tube. Nothing requirement there. Just We don't have any limitations. And then that primary tube right there is being delivered to the analyzer okay at the analyzer we process the tube and put it into a five position rack and then it's processed on the chemistry immunoassay when it's done running on the chemistry immunoassay it comes back we recap it okay auto, it's auto recap auto recap and then we store it in the add-on buffer Okay, so the auto is going to be done from this dog. Yep. Okay. okay so, so it brings the specimen back. We store it here. Now this you can use for add-ons and archiving. Okay. So for add-ons, when Infinity checks and says, hey, I got a pending test, it'll automatically pull that sample, send it down to the analyzers, run that pending test, and then bring it back automatically. So when we do the add-on test, it's already going to measure the volume that are we able to add on from here, or it still has to go there? So you can program it that it decaps it and goes back to the sample check module. But if you've already done that and you know you have enough, you can have that programmed in it as well. Now the only thing you may have to do to get that add-on to work is you may have to take the add-on, which is maybe a different accession number, and add it to the accession number that's in here. Okay, because that may be the way your LIS does it today. A lot of customers do it that way. So the person, instead of going to get the tube, they look up the tube, find it, add it to the existing section. So going to find the tube for you. Yeah. What you are doing is just relabeling with a new number. Yeah, you're just going to tell it to, you find the specimen in Infinity, it says it's here, you add the test to that accession number that's here, automatically pulls it, runs it, and brings it back and archives it.